This is the kind of um, pandemic that we all wish never would have happened. We knew we were facing a surge of cases that were coming our way. There's hot spots cropping up all around the state and we needed more capacity and we needed it fast. We kind of already knew that something was brewing, um, uh, but there were a lot of challenges. You know, we, we weren't getting any reassurance from the CDC that we were allowed to do any testing. On the 12th of March this year, the governor of California changed the regulations to allow um, some previously uh, only research labs to do clinical diagnostic testing. Giving you a sense of where we're going is to centralize our testing capacity, to partner with our counties and to provide facilities where we can access substantially greater number of tests. And within, I think, probably less than an hour of that executive order going through, Joe had gotten a, a call from the clinical lab at UCSF and the decision had been made that we were gonna ramp up testing. We turned our research lab, which was essentially just empty lab space at the time, into one of the nation's leading COVID-19 testing labs capable of processing thousands of tests per day, and we did it all in eight days. Many of these departments of public health don't have good access to public health laboratories with large testing capacity. So in many cases, especially for the safety net hospitals, if we weren't doing this testing, the testing might not actually get done. So it turns out that the Biohub is the perfect place to build one of these expansion labs. Many of the problems and obstacles that we face require kind of novel solutions. We have a whole engineering team that works on robotics, electronics, and fluidics. And so when we encountered a problem, we had engineers on staff ready to solve them. We thought we were gonna have a, about a week to set up the lab and get validated, and then I believe we were told we needed to be able to run our validation in, in 24 hours. As research scientists, we're not set up to do this type of work and to understand how to navigate the FDA and the CDC and you know, kind of all these systems that we just aren't used to. And that, I think, was the moment was like, I don't know if we're gonna, we're gonna be able to do it. But we did it and we did it in record time. We all worked really late into the night, came back the next morning at like 5 a.m. ready to do the validation, and we, we passed. Okay, so welcome to the CLIA Hub. Here, uh, this is where everything starts. So we get phone calls throughout the day from eight to five from all of the neighboring departments of health. Um, they come and bring samples to us. Organizing cuffs and everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you Thank so you much. So I yeah. got six of them Never. in here for you. Okay, great. Just seeing the whole place just pivot like one of those transformer robots that you thought was a car and like all of a sudden is like a PCR testing crazy robot was really cool. Just every, it felt like all those relationships we had from all of these research collaborations just sort of transmuted and that meant we all knew each other and could work together well. And with um, our partners at UCSF, have also been incredible. Just the whole thing sort of stood up. All of the electronics uh, companies weren't really shipping because of the pandemic. So we ended up making a device out of scrap electronics that we had in the lab. We had a scrap uh, small LCD screen, uh, we had a small mini computer, um, and a barcode scanner. This was made by our bioengineering team. We called the bartender, and it's essentially a, a little device for filling these tubes with shield. This device is called the Well Lit, and we use it to re-array uh, samples from tubes to plates, and plates are what we use um, uh, to do the RNA extraction. Um, this is called the Hamilton. It has all of the different patient samples, and we're gonna move them from the individual tubes into a 96 well plate. So what we have here is a Bravo liquid handler. What it basically is is a machine with a robotic arm. The robotic arm will move up and down and around between the nine different platforms, picking things up, moving things around, aspirating liquid, dispensing liquid. So our computer engineering team, together with our data scientists here at the Biohub, spun up an entire laboratory information system in just a matter of days to literally do all of that tracking and reporting in a way that basically people said couldn't be done, but we did it in record time. So this entire process of booting up the CLIA hub 
at the Biohub has been a tight partnership with the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. And many others have really helped us build up this laboratory information system that without which we couldn't have been able to accomplish this. And so I put the call out, all you graduate students and postdocs or molecular biologists, you know, if you want to help and you want to get involved in the fight, you can volunteer for us. You know, when I first signed up on the volunteer forum, there was at least 200 people within the first week who, just from our UCSF community pretty much, who had volunteered. It's really great to see that people are kind of stepping in and wanting to donate their time basically to to work on something together. So these are UCSF graduate students, postdocs, and even faculty members who, whose labs were shut down in March due to the shelter-in-place order. And similarly, they also wanted to contribute, right? And so they graciously volunteered, you know, 40 hours a week or, you know, or more in some cases. And these are highly trained scientists who were able to, you know, quickly get up to speed in the laboratory environment. They've been absolutely stunning. The volunteers start to come in. And they are really the ones that do all the hard work. Um, they do the extractions, they um, start the qPCR, and, and they do at least two rounds of these uh, on a day. And then starting at around noon, the samples from other counties uh, start to come in. So then we organize those, we accession those, put stickers on those, and put them in plates, ready for the next shift to, to do more of these extractions and, and get results. They come in every morning and they, they just, they want to help. They're like, what can I do? And it doesn't matter if the task is, you know, unboxing things, stickering things, or if it's something a little more complicated, like in RNA extraction, they're always ready to help. This effort that we've embarked in has really reinforced my, my desire to be in medicine and public health, really work in that overlap. And CLIA Hub is receiving samples from all over Bay Area. This experience has shown me how medicine can work so closely with public health and how they depend on each other. So in addition to just testing individuals to see if they're positive for the virus or not, we also have a whole nother layer of analysis here at the Biohub. What we do is any of the samples that test positive, we actually take out of the freezer and we'll actually sequence the SARS virus that's in that sample. The reason why is it would provide a very rich portrait of all the viruses here and allow us to know when there have been new introductions, for example, from out of state or whether there's continued transmission in different pockets, which then allow people to focus their efforts into these hotspots to interrupt these transmission chains. Understanding the sequence of SARS-CoV-2 can help us to understand how it's transmitted and being um, circulating within California, and it can help our public health and uh, healthcare workers take advantage of um, that information to design interventions or um, control measures. So prior to COVID-19, one of the things the Biohub had been really deep into was working on a program we call IDC together with the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. This was a cloud compute platform that is designed to process pathogen data from sequencers. One of the principles behind IDC was to have as many countries on this system as possible to set up like a virtual network of nodes that would be like sensors so that as new emerging viruses coming from wherever they may come, would be picked up and detected rapidly in almost any population. Providing these tools really helps democratize the situation and put sequencing in the hands of those who actually really need it, but who haven't had access to it up till now. It feels really good to be contributing and helping people and be putting my skill set to use in a way that um, you know really makes a difference in the world. It really is amazing to see that the system can work if people want it to work. If, if you know if the folks in charge at all levels start pulling red tape out of the way, they start focusing on the common good. It's amazing what we can do in even a very short period of time. There's going to be challenges in the future for whatever job or whatever kind of project I'm doing, but. 
you know, with the right people and, and the right kind of efforts, and I think we could accomplish almost anything. I don't think there's anything more impactful or more important we could be doing right now but this one thing.